Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I've read so far in October. This is my October mid-month wrap-up. I am very relieved to say that I did not have a mid-month wrap-up last month because I didn't read enough books. Oh, I feel so like happy. <laughs> I was in such like a rut with reading. I didn't want to read. I didn't really feel like reading. It wasn't like a slump per se. It was just like, I'm not in the mood. So I'm definitely in the mood now. I've read 11 books so far this month and I am ecstatic. I am so happy about that. So let's get into these 11 books. We're first going to start off with the, I think four, I think I read four books. Yes, four books for the Monster Mash read-along. This was a read-along put together by a few other um, booktubers. I'll link them down below. I was asked to be a part of this by Hannah Blackwell, who created the readathon and was in charge of everything. She was the brains behind it all. So um, I'll talk about the four books that I read. For that read-along, I just picked up monster romances, paranormal romances that were high priority for me that I really wanted to read. First is actually an arc. I'm on Jillian Graves' arc team and she had an arc for um, Daddy of the Sea, which is a little novella, a part of the Monsters in Love anthology. That's where you can get it. So I'll link below the link to the anthology that it's a part of, but I personally just read like her story in the anthology called Daddy of the Sea. This is about Car. I don't remember what Car is short for, but her name's Car. <laughs> and at the beginning of this book, her boyfriend, I think she finds out her boyfriend cheats on her. So she like throws or like pushes his motorcycle off of a cliff into the ocean. And there is oil and gas in the motorcycle. And basically the the king of the sea, um, he has a name, I don't remember, it's her the daddy of the sea, <laughs> um, ends up punishing her for polluting the ocean. Um, but she doesn't know that he's actually had his eye on her for like years. And this is finally his excuse to like lure her in. So yeah, it's about the daddy of the sea punishing car. <laughs> this was a fun, quick, short read full of tentacle goodness. If you want to read about some tentacle stuff, Look it over there. I just really wanted more from the story and I really hope we get a full length story about them. I don't know if we ever will, um, but I felt like I just wanted more, but it, it is a novella part of anthology. So I gave this one three out of five stars. Next, I ended up reading Moon Blooded Breeding Clinic by C.M. Nascosta. This is about our heroine who lives in, um, what's the town called? Oh, Cambert Creek. It's like a town full of monsters that live like humans, like normal people, um, but it's a town notoriously known for having monsters in it. And this book takes place during the pandemic. Um, so if you're not really wanting to read about that, don't pick this up. Anyway, our heroine in here, she's a human living in this town full of monsters. And she finds out about this breeding clinic where you can get pregnant by a werewolf and she really desperately wants a baby. She didn't have the best marriage with her monster husband. They couldn't get pregnant and um, they just didn't have the best relationship towards the end and they ended up getting a divorce and ever since then she just really wanted a baby. So she signs up to be a part of this breeding clinic and she matches with our hero. Like she picks the hero to be basically the sperm donor, but it's not artificial insemination. They have to like actually do stuff, you know what I mean, for her to get pregnant um, because there's like werewolf tendencies that help with women getting pregnant and stuff. They end up falling for each other in the midst of being a part of this, I don't want to say simulation. It's, I don't really know how to describe it, this procedure that they're doing. They end up actually falling for each other, meeting outside of their like required meetings and stuff and falling for each other, even though they know that they shouldn't. This was a fine read for me. I honestly thought that it went on way too long. I was anticipating this book to be novella length and it wasn't. There were just some points in the book where I was kind of bored, um, which is unfortunate. Um, and unfortunately that's happened with a few CM Costa books for me. Um, so I'm trying to find the one that I love. <laughs> I haven't found yet one that I love by this author. Um, and I'm hoping that um, the one that's currently sitting in my Libby is gonna be that for me. I'm gonna pick up her like most recent release about like a monster pirate or something. I'm like, if anything were to get me on CM Costa's like side, it would be a monster pirate. I mean, say less. So this one was fine for me. I just thought it was long and there were things that I just didn't really care about while reading this. Next is Wed to the Lich by Layla Fay. I normally pick up Layla Fay's books when I'm wanting a good laugh. Um, they're normally short, 
funny monster romance novellas that do not take themselves seriously whatsoever. Um, so I was actually stunned when reading this and how triggering it was, even though like she has a lot of trigger warnings and she has trigger warnings in every single one of her books like beforehand, like watch out if this triggers you, don't pick it up. And so I really appreciate the trigger warnings, but I wasn't anticipating the level of like seriousness in this book. Cause again, I'm used to like laughing my butt off while reading these. Um, but this book is probably her most serious one. This is a part of the, what's the series title? Arranged Monster Mate series, where a few different monster romance authors basically write about humans and monsters getting mated together, like being the best genetic match or fated mate or whatever through this mating agency. So May in here um, decides to be a part of this and be a bride and she gets matched to Virgil, who is one of the like the most feared monsters in all the land. He's a lich. Um, you kind of see him on the cover. He basically like eats souls kind of. And so everyone's like terrified of him. May has not lived the best life. She grew up in an orphanage of sorts where the proprietor, the owner of the orphanage would bully and demean women into thinking that they were overweight when in fact they were not and basically told them if you eat anything you'll get fat and so that's ingrained into May's brain and so she thinks that if she eats anything no man would ever want her because then she'll look ugly and like that's ingrained in her brain and Virgil's like trying to tell her like I don't care like I want you to be healthy he can tell when a life force is dimming or not his powers and he's like you are dying your skin and bones you are dying I am putting food in you so you can live if you're triggered by food and like I, I th they never say anorexia but like eating disorders specifically like I don't know if you should pick this up because I was even triggered and I don't have I've never been really triggered by that. You know what I mean? So just be aware before going into this. So um, I actually personally didn't rate this because I didn't really know what to rate it because I feel like it has this serious note to it that other people should know about. Um, but I personally just didn't feel like rating this um, because I feel like it is an important book, um, but it's also a monster romance. <laughs> so it was a good read and I feel like Layla Fay does a great job at depicting what May is going through in her brain because it's definitely not something easy to go through. So I did enjoy this read, but I personally just am not reading it. And the last book that I ended up picking up for the Monster Mash Readathon is uh, Wolf Song by TJ Klune, which is also the first book a part of the Green Creek read along that I am doing with Sam, Samantha from Books with Samantha, Christy from Christy Reads A Lot, and Jess from Peace Love Books. We are basically reading one book in this series a week. Um, and I missed the first live show for the read along at the end of September. I was unable to join. And so I finally finished the book at the beginning of October. I love this. I love this. It's like one of those books that I was putting off for so long, but I knew that I'd love it. I don't know why I do that. I know that other people do that out there too. Like, you know, you're going to love a book but you put it off for whatever reason. <laughs> um, sometimes I think I may be saving them for a rainy day or like read-alongs like this give me the push to finally pick these books up. Um, so this is about Joe and Ox. So Ox lives in this very small town called Green Creek. And one day he is walking home from either work or school, I can't remember, but uh, a little like 10 year old boy I think 10 year old boy um, basically runs up to him and befriends him right on the spot and brings him back to his home with his family. His name is Joe. Little does Ox know that Joe just brought him into a werewolf pack. And he also doesn't know that Joe and Ox may or may not be fated mates. So I absolutely loved this. Ox is like everything to me. I love Ox so much. <laughs> Like, I love him. He is beautiful. Like, I love reading about his character and what he goes through. He's dealt with a lot in his life and he's overcome a lot. And I just loved seeing him finally find a family. Like, oh, it was beautiful. I don't know what else I could say about this book without spoiling it or um, say things that other people haven't yet, but I I loved it. I, I absolutely loved it. And I totally understand the love people have for TJ Klune and his writing. This was my first TJ Klune book. The audiobook was absolutely fantastic. 
and I could not put it down. It is the best book. I've read a lot of books in the series. I'm going to talk about them in a second. But this series is like the best thing to listen to while going on a walk. Like being outside in nature. Like, oh, it's so atmospheric. I absolutely love it. It put me in the best mood possible while going on walks was listening to this series. Joan Ox are absolutely everything. I love them with my whole heart and chest. Tropes for this one are um, fall vibes for sure. This book has fall vibes. Um, it's Faded Mates, it's Found Family, it's an MM romance, paranormal, it's slow burn, it's small town, and there are werewolves. I gave this book a five out of five stars. The rest of the books I didn't read for the Monster Mash read along, but I ended up reading monster books anyway, <laughs> um, because it's October. Like, what do you expect? So, um, for my birthday in September, Aspatia over at Asparagus is reading gifted me this ebook. This is Found by the Lake Monster by Lillian Lark. I've been wanting to read it for a while, so I picked it up. This is about Amy who gets lost in the woods one night and she comes across this lake monster. This lake monster ends up finding her and there's a little bit of a mix up because um, Amy knows nothing about like paranormal creatures, but she's always been intrigued by them. She doesn't know that they actually exist in real life. Um, and the hero of this book, the lake monster, I think he's called a Nyx, if I'm not mistaken. Um, anyway, he is expecting a blind date, essentially. He's been set up by a matchmaker to go on a date with a witch, I'm pretty sure. So he comes across this woman in the forest and is like, oh my gosh, this must be her. <laughs> and he takes her back to his cabin and makes her dinner and eats with her. They form this great conversation and bond right from the get-go. But what happens when he figures out that Amy is not who he thinks she is? So um, this was a fun, quick read. I honestly personally just wanted more from this one. Um, for tropes in this one, you have the primal kink, okay? Um, he wants to chase her. Um, Insta-love, there's a mistaken identity, monsters, and it's a novella. I gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. I personally just wanted more out of it. Next, I ended up picking up Raven Song by TJ Klune, the second book in the Green Creek series. And this one is the romance between Gordo and Mark. I don't know how much I can really say about the other books in the series, so I'm going to keep it as vague as possible because I don't really know what's going to go on. Like when I was reading book one, I didn't really know who the other pairings were. I kind of had an inkling, but I didn't want to, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. But um, so Gordo and Mark, you know from book one that Gordo is a witch and Mark is a werewolf, a part of the Bennett pack, the Bennett family. And this is their second chance romance. I think they're both in their 40s and this is about them finally getting together. They were together when they were in their teens, early 20s, but the Bennetts ended up leaving Green Creek and all these years later they come back and um, Gordo and Mark are forced to face each other again. All I wanna leave you with, that's all I wanna tell you, I really enjoyed this one as well. I gave it four stars. I did not love it as much as book one, but it's still a great read nonetheless. Next I have That Time I Got Drunk and Yeeted a Love Potion at a Werewolf by Kimberly Lemming. Kimberly Lemming puts a smile on my face every single time I read one of her books. This is my third book that I've read by her and it will never be my last. <laughs> this is a part of the, what's the series title? I always forget series titles. The um, Mead, Hap, Mead Mishap series. Sorry, this is the second book in that series. I read book one and book 1.5. Um, and so this one is about Brie, who we did see in book one. Essentially, it's a fantasy world where um, in book one in a series, demons were essentially like pets to people, but they were actually under spell, a spell from like a, demon witch person and no one knew and the spell finally broke and all the demons and paranormal creatures like finally have like their mind to themselves now so the hero of this book his name is felix and he is a werewolf and this is his romance with brie who is like best friends with the heroine from book one cinnamon one night brie is at a bar and she's getting hit on by a guy she just keeps telling no to. She's like, no, I'm not interested. And he buys her a drink and is like, just drink it, just drink it. And she ends up just like throwing it across the bar and not, not drinking it. And it ends up hitting Felix, who was not that creepy dude, don't worry. Um, but it ends up hitting Felix. And little does she know that the guy who was hitting on her actually put like a love potion in there. And now Felix is under the thrall of a love potion or so Brie thinks because Felix is immediately like, oh my gosh, I found my faded mate. You're my fate mate. Like, let's go. We're gonna be together forever. And Brie's like, no, no, no. It's just a love potion. Like, it's gonna wear off. Like, we are not fated mates. But Felix is determined to show Brie that it is not just the love potion talking, that they are actually fated mates. He's a werewolf. He knows what he's talking about. 
right when we will see their mates, they know. So he's going to make it his life's mission to prove to Brie that they are meant and destined to be together. I absolutely loved how obsessed Felix was with Brie. Like, yes. Yes, please. This the man was or werewolf was so obsessed with her. I love it. Like he was like, let's go get married. He even like changed their name on her mailbox to <laughs> to like his last name because he's like, we're gonna get married. We're gonna have the same last name. And so he like changes the name on the mailbox. Like and they barely know each other. Like it's so cute. I really loved it. Um, Alexis, the talking sword, also makes a cameo in here, which was super funny. Like this book. This series makes me laugh my butt off. Tropes for this one, cinnamon roll hero, faded mates. It's funny. You have a hero with golden retriever energy for sure. It's magical. There's a shifter, there are werewolves, and you have a worshiping hero. I give this book four out of five stars. A quick one that I'm going to mention is actually Love Song by TJ Klune. I didn't know that there's like free novellas that he's written on his website. And um, I was like looking at, I just clicked on the Green Creek like series title on Goodreads and it showed all the novellas in between some of the books. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know there were novellas. So if you just Google Love Song by TJ Klune, like it pops up for free on his website. And it's like a 15 page novella about Elizabeth. And if you know who Elizabeth is, like, oh, this book was everything. I gave this, it's not even if I get 15 pages on his website, <laughs> like it was, oh it was so beautiful you kind of like see through elizabeth's eyes and what she's gone through in this series and like i was tearing up like this woman has gone through so much and i can't really talk about it because i don't want to spoil anything but like oh this was beautiful elizabeth just deserves the world and i loved reading this like 15 page novella about her five stars i finally ended up picking up servant to the spy day by ruby dixon this has been on many a tbrs um but i finally did it because i was like it deals with spiders during October, let's do it. Um, so this is actually the fourth book. Yeah, the fourth book in her fantasy romance series and Ruby Dixon's fantasy romance series. It's like those big chunky books over there. Um, and oh, by the way, yes, I, I rearranged this shelf if you couldn't tell. <laughs> um, so all Ruby's books are on that shelf. Anyway, so Sermons and Spy Day. Um, you get to meet Yelena in book one in the series, Bound to the Battle God. Um, and she has had a very interesting life um and in book one you see her volunteer to be the anchor the human anchor to help these three spy day gods stay in the mortal realm this is basically just their little story it's novella length of um yelena caring for these three gods that happen to control fate so one controls the path not controls or looks in on like takes care of the past, one does the present, the other one does the future. And essentially though, they're kind of all the same person, just split up into three different beings. So like, I don't like why I choose romances. Like I just don't, like it's a lot for me, it's a lot. I much prefer like MMF or FFM or like where everyone's together, you know what I mean? And that wasn't in here. That was not in here. Everyone is not together in here. Like there's no sword crossing if you know what I mean. Um, but like I actually really enjoyed this and um, I think it's probably maybe because they're all technically like the same person just split into three different bodies. So yeah, but um, it was interesting. They all three have their different like personalities. And if you're creeped out by spiders and stuff, like it's not like ensnared where they actually literally like look like spiders, I don't think. Um, like I honestly couldn't really get like a full grasp of what these gods are supposed to like look like per se. Um, but I wasn't really giving like spider spider vibes. So if you're worried about that, like that's fine. I think they have like spiders qualities to them and there's like spider webs everywhere and like other types of spiders, like real spiders, like in the castle itself that they're all staying in. Um, but yeah, it's basically about Yelena figuring out what is going on with these gods and falling for them and taking care of them. It was a quick hot read, really fun. So tropes in this one, three or more people. Uh, it's a fantasy romance, forced proximity, cause they're all in this castle together. Um, it's a monster romance and it's a novella. I give this book four to five stars. Then I ended up reading Burn for Jack by Aiden Pierce. This was actually a book that I read on a live show with April and Hannah, I'll link them both down below as well as the live show we did. We did like reading sprints where we read this book 
like live, which was really fun. I've never done that before. I did have to leave early because I was going somewhere, but I stayed on for like 45 minutes and it was really fun. Um, I never would have picked this book up if not for them because I've never heard about it before. Who knows, maybe I'll later on down the line I would have. Um, but Hannah asked me to join and read this book with her in April and I was like, yes, let's do it. So this is a bizarre, <laughs> bizarre book. <laughs> so um, my hair went in here, her name's Ada. Um, and she is bullied by this guy who's a few years older than her. She's 18. This guy's like 21. He's like bullying her and ends up betting her she can't go to this like cornfield maze on Halloween because that is the location where one of her ancestors was burned at the stake. And she's like, you know what? I'll take the bet. I need the money. He's betting me. So let's just go. Um, but then he ends up locking her in one of those like stockade, like old timey things. Um, and uh, he's like, you're going to stay here until this demon comes and we're going to watch you get absolutely wrecked by him. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck? Um, but don't worry, the pumpkin demon comes. Okay. Turns out it's like the reincarnation of Ada's ancestors, like lover. And apparently Ada is the, an the reincarnation of that ancestor too. So like his lover, you know what I mean? So it's interesting. I gave it three stars. It was like an interesting read. <laughs> Nothing too serious about it. Like it was a fine, like holiday hot book for a guy with a pumpkin head, so. <laughs> and the last one that I have to mention is Heart Song by TJ Klune, which is the third book in the Green Creek series. Oh my word. <laughs> I wanna cry. I don't wanna cry, we're not gonna cry. I, I love this book so much i love it i was not expecting this book to go the way that it was going like i was absolutely shocked i predict plot twists very easily i was like what the heck <laughs> there's a plot twist in here i don't want to go too much into this um but this is the romance between robbie and kelly you've met them in the other books in the series and their romance is absolutely beautiful <laughs> like i loved it oh it's stunning it is absolutely stunning um, they're both werewolf shifters in here. Both of them deserve the absolute world. So I don't really know what else to say without spoiling anything. But yeah, I love them so much. And I just, I've been thinking about them all day. I finished this book today and I've been like thinking about them all day and they've been putting a big smile on my face. I love them. They're, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. I don't want to talk too much about this book because I don't want to spoil it. Um, but I'm actually having a live show tonight on my channel about this book with the other ladies who are co-hosting the read-along. Um, so I'll link that live show down below because if you're watching this video the day it goes up, then um, the live show would have happened last night. So um, I will link that below if you want to watch it and watch all of us talk about it. <laughs> but needless to say, I gave this book five stars. <laughs> Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I've read so far in October. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any Halloween related emoji down below. And also I wanted to tell you the video, the day that this video comes up, goes up is the first day of the novellathon. So be sure to participate or let me know if you're participating down below. Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.